yeah. but they ran it in Sesame mm. Street, so you would see little clips of the uh, <laughs> pinball making the rounds, and you'd be like, who dropped acid and came up with this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, little kids would watch it, and I, to this day, I still have it in you my You remember mind. Morgan Freeman was part of the Electric Company cast? Are you serious? Oh, yeah. Go back and check it out. Morgan Freeman's in there. <laughs> Young He's ass like seven inch guy, to Morgan Freeman. And uh, who else is in there? Tons of tons of uh, yeah. talent that you had no idea. Totally psychedelic. They had the Spider-Man skit. They had the Bloodhound Gang. Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> with yeah. Yeah. With no. We're just going to call this segment yeah. Remember When. Remember When. <laughs> Steph and Caleb. <laughs> 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 sure. Now on to Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. Oh, there now that go. I do remember because I'm still creeped out by those things. But I, I still have to go there from time to time, and it's a mess. Hey, check that out. It's like a casino Sweet. for kids. It, it totally is. <laughs> We're and it's so oogie. With really bad salad bar, which I totally it's partake great, though. of. Instead of like, care. you know, numbers and statistics and probability, it's just like hand eye coordination. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they got the same stuff. Ski ball. <laughs> <clears throat> Instead right. of getting a bunch of hookers and cocaine with your winnings, you just get some stuffed plush Where novelty. Where are you in gambling? <laughs> well, <laughs> Vegas. That's how we're starting that show off. Yeah. Hello, I everyone. I'm doing Vegas wrong. This is Trends with Benefits. This is our weekly roundtable podcast where we talk about the tech topics of the day. We've got a tons of stuff that we're going to get to. We'll probably avoid the uh, coke and hookers a little bit, but we may get <laughs> circle back around to that. You never know where we're going to go with this. Uh, we are live on Facebook and YouTube right now, and uh, we've got a ton of topics that we're going to get to today. I mean, there's, there's a lot. So we're going to cycle through a bunch of things. I did put up, though, it just as the question of the day, because it's, it's, it is the uh, one-year anniversary of Pokemon Go coming out, which I know a lot of you, if, if you're like me, I tried it, and I didn't, I didn't really tell anybody because I was embarrassed about it because I have no <laughs> idea what I'm doing. So there it is. I used it for... Probably about four months, and then uh, which is long, a lot That's longer a long than a lot of people. You actually you lasted really longer tried. than I did. I know. <laughs> I told everybody I tried it for a week and then didn't do it. And I know I what totally... gym you work out in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so I did, but I'm I'm curious if people are still using it because as of right now they have 65 million current users. So there yep. are a God lot of damn. people out there still to this day. Uh, so we have people kind of coming in with their comments and questions, and we want that throughout the entire show as we bounce to the different topics. But let's introduce our cast. I'm Greg Nibbler. Ooh. To my right. Hi guys, I'm Stephanie Strickland. Yay! Stephanie Strickland, she last the, uh, the Pokeball Cup. Oh, oh, oh. What's in that Pokeball Cup? A whiskey. Exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Wish you were here. Last week we did drink tequila, so I think it's it's probably good. Uh, that was good for last week. I don't think I could do that every week. No, I was so not productive after that show. <laughs> so That's it doesn't yeah. help that it's 8,000 degrees in this room. Yeah, the combination of booze and hot. that is nap time for stuff. It is true. It's it is like getting, very warm in this like, room. It's like you know doing six shots and climbing in the hot tub. Nothing good ever no. happens <laughs> from that. Well, in between, before we get to the whiskey mist down the end. Drew Prindle right here. <laughs> Drew Prindle. Hello, Drew. And, um, yeah, we do, we do have nicknames for a lot of people now on the show, or at least a couple. So uh, yeah, we like, have Caleb. <laughs> uh, we, haven't, we don't have one for you yet. Right. And Drew doesn't have one yet either, do you? I don't think I feel like we don't, we, don't, torpedo. we don't need to force it. We just need to wait it's until it happen. comes up. It comes up naturally, organically. It's an organic process. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll happen as it's supposed to. But we have the, the whiskey mist. The whiskey mist. Down on the end, <laughs> a.k.a. Mr. Caleb Dennis. I think we need like a, a sound bite of that that you can just press on a soundboard. I know. So it's consistent. Be, yeah, from it's always episode different. Episode. <laughs> Depends on how much whiskey I had earlier. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. So we, we'll never know. We'll probably find out towards the end of the show. We'll see, <laughs> we'll see where this ends up. We already started off on a high note, so let's see where we go. Um, all right, so Pokemon Go, like I said, out for one year today. Just taking a look here if people are uh, still playing it. Um, let's see. Bruce says, Pokemon, got to catch them all. So somebody is still playing it. I know Dan, producing behind the scenes, is still playing it. Um, maybe a lot of people have stopped now, but it, it'll be curious to see. Uh, Bruce also says, it's the 65 million people that want a Nintendo Switch, but unable to obtain one. So that's why they're on <laughs> Pokemon Go. That could, uh, that could be it. So let us know what you think as we go through all these topics. Uh, Steph, since you have that. Yes. Yes. You are playing it? No. God, no. Okay, all right. No, as soon as it was like, <laughs> hey, I need your email, phone number, geolocation, all that, I was like, I'm out. Yeah. I'm good. Thank you, but no thank you. <laughs> yeah, they do want a lot of information. That is true. And we're going to talk about this, too, because there's another uh, kind of couple of things that I want to bring up with uh, augmented reality and just where that went. But before we get too far, mm. as usual, it uh, seems like every time we're about ready to do this show, there is iPhone news. Get out. No way. Is no. there some leaked photos or something? Sh maybe? Shocking. Yes. <laughs> as a matter of fact, Steph, there is. So it's this uh, today, what we found out, a couple of things. One is that... Um, 
apparently they are still having a lot of problems with the touch ID that they're trying to work on where you they can uh you know, open it up with a with a fingerprint scanner, essentially a thumbprint scanner, to open up your phone. And this is something that we've heard rumors about that Apple's just having a really hard time making this work with a full coverage front display. And there's talk now they may just skip it altogether and go for a facial recognition system. And the way this would work is that they have a higher end camera on the back. And uh, I'll just kind of give you the, the basic idea from this patent that's been leaked: is the camera would essentially be on all the time. It would be on low energy use, but on whether your phone's locked or not and constantly scanning for the owner's face. Oh, gosh. That's the part that I don't like about it. So this <laughs> phone is always on scanning. I mean, if you could imagine if this thing were to get hacked. But, I mean, I guess it would be easy. You never have to worry about unlocking your phone. You just hold it up and it instantly recognizes you and it's open and secure, supposedly, so <laughs> nobody else can use it. Uh, but that is uh, what one of the things that they might be working Minding on. Minding your own business in the bathroom, just reading the news like yeah. everybody else, and out it goes. <laughs> yeah. No, nope, I don't like it. Always scanning. All right, so Drew, what, what did you have to say on this? Um, okay, first of all, <laughs> what's the other phone that already does this? Uh, does the face, the There's facial recognition? I'm not sure. I, sh I swear we spoke about some phone. Uh, we probably did. Yeah, there was that somebody's working on. <laughs> Come on, Facebook. The fact that we yeah. can't remember Facebook, help me out. what I guess phone that, it was that means it that yeah. it, nobody, no, nobody cares. Right. All right. Least of all me. Well, that would be cool. I'd be down for it. I think You want cool. one? I mean, probably still wouldn't get one. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you try it. That's not the killer feature that's going to sell me on it, but. Right. Is that something that you would prefer over the fingerprint? Scanner? Absolutely not. And I'll tell you right now. Yep. When you're passed out, drunk, and your friend grabs your phone and puts it in front of your face, boom, unlocked, right? I mean, oh. are they going to... Couldn't they do Can the they same do? thing yeah. with your thumb? Really? The, that's true. I suppose they could. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing. It's but I like where you're thinking on this. That is a very good point. It's a sliding scale, if you think about it. Like, what, if we would have had this conversation 10 years ago and been like, oh, the camera's always on and mm -hmm. it's always listening, we would have lost it. But over time, we're getting more and more comfortable yeah, with a true. constant intrusion of cameras and listening devices in any way, shape, or form, yeah. right? So that's... If you look at where we're at now, we're like, well, maybe... You, maybe the camera on all the time is okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so not okay. That freaks me right out. I there. would prefer just a thumb scanner, but you know. Yeah. There's The thing is, there's cam w much more easily hackable cameras all over the place yeah. that are that are constantly recording your faces <laughs> everywhere. My laptop, I'm total like, I'm terrified of like the whole rat system. I've got like tape over my webcam. Like, what am I going to do? do? Pick my nose? I'm I don't the exact care. same way. Are yeah. You? This is the DT computer, so I didn't put the band aid over the camera. Mm -hmm. But uh, my other one, <laughs> yes, I've got it. Yeah. Uh, I, I have it on there. I figure in terms of security, though, like, I'd rather this be an Apple device than any number of other Absolutely. companies' devices. That's I figure true. like they've they've shown us time and time again in history that they are going to protect their users' data and information in any way, shape or form. I think it's still the least hacked <clears throat> phone platform yeah. out mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Because um, of the so, control. Yeah. That's what Android users don't like. But what I don't like though is that there's a possibility that they may not give you a choice. Like I hope that you can turn it off. Turn the feature off and just let me press another button and put in my little pin code and be done with it. You know, as long as you give the user an option. But Apple hasn't right. really been great about giving people options on things when you just remove the headphone jack and say, sorry, that's how it goes. You know, True. that tells me that maybe they won't make it an option. I don't know. We'll see. A um, couple other things with it. And Brian's noting, will a photo of your face unlock it? Supposedly, this is like a 3D scanner. So I'm guessing you that's couldn't just hold question. up a picture. But yeah, that is that is something to think about. Um, I don't know. Maybe if it was high enough resolution printed picture you might be able to do it if you really wanted to get in somebody's phone i can't even get through the tsa global entry with just my glasses on let alone like how that's supposed to be our main security coming in and out of the country i don't know how that's supposed to work on your phone yeah and well that's supposedly one of the things just because they can't get the touch id to work so they're going going towards this you know maybe again these are all rumors about the iphones and we got a bunch of stuff that we're going to get to uh the other thing about them is that they're um, and, and we kind of knew this before, that they're aiming for all of their phones in 2018 to be OLED screens, which is also a little bit behind the times, because how long has Samsung had OLED screens? I mean, which Samsung is also where they're LG buying. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was going to say. Yeah, they're, they're buying these from Samsung for the most part, since they can't make their own. I mean, OLED. I'm glad that they're coming around. They're gorgeous, gorgeous yeah. displays. Fragile, maybe-ish? Nah, less no. fragile than an LCD screen. You don't... They're, really? They're, yeah, they're... I mean, you can bend and fold them, they're fairly resilient. You do need to give them a protective I'll layer. I'll still break it. But mm -hmm. I think yeah. <laughs> I will find a way. it'd be great if they could uh, get away from going with glass covering and go with something uh -huh. uh, a little bit more impact resistant. Sure. Um, I'm not worried about it breaking. Okay. Maybe I should be, but I'm not. 
All right. Well, that's a, a guess. You know, again, these are our iPhone rumors to start off the day. So uh, facial recognition software and OLED screens starting in 2018. Something else that came out with phones just before we move on to a different topic. And this one is pretty cool. So if you know the, the camera manufacturer, Red. Red makes very, very, very high-end cameras, and now they have their own phone that's going to be coming out. It's called the Hydrogen One uh, Android-powered smartphone, and what they're promising with it is pretty amazing. What it, whether it's going to be able to do this, or I don't know. Uh, they say it's going to enable um, their their very, very high-end screen that they've got, and it's going to enable on-the-fly switching between 2D content, stereoscopic 3D content, and holographic red hydrogen 4-view content. And we don't know exactly what that All means, right. but what the hydro, you know, hydrogen 4-view content... It means I need more filters for my face. <laughs> you can <just laughs> yeah. see everything. That is, that is true, probably. <laughs> this thing will scan every little pore on you. Great. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> but if it's, uh, they're, they're calling it a professional hydrogen holographic display. Now, whether it's going to be something What does that even like, mean? Uh, yeah. <laughs> true. I, I want mean, one, though. Oh, my God, exactly. already. You want one? That <laughs> sounds amazing. Yeah, a holographic display. Even if, it, I mean, I'm imagining something where if you just lay it down flat and it's holographic images on it, that would be cool. I don't know if we're to it's that probably point. Probably not going to do probably that. Probably not that point. <laughs> Um, but, but for $1,200, we can find out. Exactly, yes. Is that how much they're charging for it? Base charge, $1,200. I would have expected Good it to God. be even more expensive than that. With Red, yeah. they make premium stuff they're, worth every penny, according to anybody. Is cheapest mm-hmm. camera like $25,000? We just had this discussion because I thought it was $30,000 okay. and I was wrong. Yeah, no, I mean, I imagine it's going to make beautiful images, gorgeous video, gorgeous uh, you know, stills. I think it's going to be awesome. If ugh, I might spring for it. Yeah, if the if I it mean, comes out of buying like a digital camera, and that's which, the thing you, know, you don't have with you all the time. If you could have a really really high end phone, I just wonder about nice the optics, right? Because I yeah. mean, one of the last reasons that people, one of several uh, reasons, mm-hmm. but I mean, it's the optics. You're limited, right? Because you can't you can't carry a moving lens in in a phone, so they have to make it a fixed lens. It's uh, Sometimes fixed focus, sometimes not. But if anybody could pull this off, I think it was red. While there are, they're saying there's going to be modular options as well oh, down the snap. road. So like the camera, so, I'm thinking the Moto Z Force yeah, Droid mm-hmm. with the snap on camera in the back. Those, mm, but yeah. But what if they have one, you know, down the road, that like red 8K handles or something? Exactly. Or, yeah. Sony did that, camera. and I don't think it took off too well for their phones. But mm-hmm. I think red speaks to a big time enthusiast community and yep. I think there's a certain kind of uh, demographic they're aiming towards and uh, I bet this phone is going to be super hot when it comes out. Watch it just explode. $1,200 for the base one. A tit- that's aluminum and a titanium titanium one for $1,600. Both coming out. You can pre-order now, it looks like, and coming out in the first quarter of 2018. So mm. pretty soon that these will be out there. So let us know what you think, too, if you're watching along on Facebook or YouTube. Having a little trouble with my Facebook page, but uh, let us know if you have some uh, comments. We'll get into those. So uh, something else I wanted to bring up, and this is an article that uh, is on digitaltrends.com, just like all these other ones that you can uh, take a look at. And it has to do with using augmented reality for other purposes. I love this. And this this is so cool. It's a company based out of Israel. There's a defense firm out of Israel that is now I mean yeah. they kind of pioneered facial recognition over there. Yeah. I'm pretty they sure. They really do. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and so this company and and Steph, I want to hear your thoughts on this. So they're they've essentially spent hundreds of millions of dollars is what they said to pare down their augmented reality technology down to goggle size to where you can wear these for goggles and they have it now for bicyclists where we've got a little video if you're watching live I think that that you can take a look at it where it'll overlay screens it looks like a normal set of biking goggles like high end high end biking glasses that you would wear and they're overlaying things on there just as the start to showcase this technology so they got the technology from fighter pilots like which you Steph just tried on one of the fighter pilots like actual helmets with the ARs. We didn't plan this; it just worked out that way. I went to Cold Lake Air Force Base, did a Digital Trends Facebook Live up there on the top five movies that need a reboot, and number one for me was Top Gun Maverick, supposed mm-hmm. to come out in 2019. Actually, there's a Digital Trends article about that yep. I saw it today. Um, <laughs> and in the process, I had a chance to put on one of their uh, head-up display helmets it's like 150 grand and there's a little projector wow. yeah so if you look <laughs> in the God. video you can find it on digital trends facebook page it's old now but if you got to go all the way to the end i put it on i was terrified to touch it because just my luck i'd scratch it or do something stupid but there's a little projector in there and it just as you turn your head all the information's just adjust to exactly where the oh fighter pilot God. needs it to be That's you cool. know as they're out there flying and so to see something like that for goggles but even a bigger application 
for example, my car so that my windshield tells me where the nearest parking space is. Mm -hmm. Everything's communicating as we go back to the Internet of Things. But everything's communicating. Why can't my car with a, a heads up display notify me about the closest, cheapest parking or if that place I like to go to is open? That's I love that you there. hate Internet of Things terms. <laughs> no, no, no. I, no just, <laughs> I really do hate it. We say a lot. it all the time. We do. But, but uh, what do they have on there? They had like your speed. Your heart rate, what mm. other kind of information um, are, are they promising Speed, to deliver? Speed, heart rate, distance. I mean, I think this one was just kind of showcasing some of the <laughs> abilities uh, that they're going to institute in this. But like Steph said, the future of it, of adding in those those different kinds of things, they're working with one company called um, Sky... It's a mapping company. I believe it's called SkyMap, to where... It's stuff that we already have with your phone where you can look up the sky and it'll say what, what the constellations are. This would all be in your I love glasses. that. I've got two of those. So apps. you could turn that on and just look up. It's there. Probably, you know, walk down um, a street and they said they could even like point out the restaurant and have an arrow over it in the distance so you know where it is you have to get to or give you specific directions based on traffic or parking spots. You could uh, inter integrate I mean, this endless. with Google Maps and have all kinds of information overlay. Yes directions, you know, what's the name of this coffee shop coming up on the right-hand side, all that kind of it's stuff. It's Google Glass. Everything. I mean, I demoed Google Glass, and it was kind of clunky, and then it sort of went away, and so now there's another company taking another crack at it. So is this just a concept at this point, or is it like an actual, do they have a working prototype or something like no, that? No, they've got a working prototype. Kyle Sweet. Wiggers okay. went and tried it out. Yeah. Oh, really? In fact, okay. there's a picture of him with wearing them while riding a bicycle. That's oh, that's pretty amazing. Awesome. Um, yeah, he tried it out in Central Park, I think, is where, yeah. he, where he was trying it out. Um, that's yeah. fun. That's so, super, super fun. I'm glad mm -hmm. you hear that. I want the these for snowboarding because yeah. they've had these goggles that they have said are basically do all the same stuff, but it's not quite the same. It's not, you know, information overlaid directly over your vision and what you're seeing. It's a little tiny screen in the corner of your vision that you, you actually, see. you have to look down to it, look away from what you're looking at in order to, you know, yeah, that see that work. stuff. And it's, you know, they market it as a HUD display, but it's not. It really needs to be over your eyeballs, over the stuff you're already looking at. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Well, and they're planning to release it to a uh, development kit later this year. So who knows what can be added on to this. But it's a pretty exciting thing. I just wanted to bring that up because the article is at digitaltrends.com. I highly suggest reading it if you're excited about AR. Because I've – I mean, VR – is, is still a lot of fun, but AR really is. I was just going to say, I'm it's... way more excited about AR than VR. Yeah. And, you know, I'm getting tired of the acronyms and talking about it all <laughs> the time. But AR, yeah, VR, I wanna, IoT. I want to use it, you know, put this yeah. in my hands. Hurry up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, patient. And again, that's like the Microsoft HoloLens. You know, it sounds kind of like what they're going for, but it looks like they've got it down to just such a small technology. And you can read the details about it all there on the website. All right, we got a lot of things to get to today. So we got a few more that we have to bounce through. And Drew, um, you want to talk about this article that went up at Digital Trends. This is more of an expand your mind kind of topic here. Um, <laughs> talking about AI, artificial intelligence, and just how much more we're seeing of that in, again, in everything. And um, what, uh, what, what this article is talking about is personhood and whether or not AI should be granted personhood in mm -hmm. like a legal sense of the matter. Yeah, exactly. So we're not talking about giving AI like civil rights or anything like that. Yeah. But because everyone was like, what? That's, that's it, insane. That's, yeah. Well, so, wait a minute. So first of all, there are like kind of two sides to this. There's like okay. the ethical side where like artificial intelligence is like already we're at the point where they have more artificial neurons than like, say, like an earthworm or a bee or something like that. So yeah. When we get to the point where they have, say, like the same mental capacity for, you know, thinking and emotions and stuff as like, let's say, like a rabbit or a dog, do we then start giving them, you know, like ethical considerations and start treating them we differently? We don't for because, rabbits or dogs right now. Because if they can think and respond and have emotions on the same level as like a small animal, do we give them, you know, rights, ethical rights? You know, we do treat them differently. <sighs> yeah. That's one side of it. The other side is giving them rights the same way that we give corporations rights as people. Mm -hmm. So the reason we do that is because, you know, back in the day when businesses were just sole proprietorships, you could, you know, it, you were just entering into a contract with one person. If something happened with the corporation, you could sue that one person. Right. But with AI, the waters are getting super murky now because um, it's like, you know, when corporations became corporations and they were lots of people, it's like, who do you blame? So we needed corporate personhood legally speaking, in order to be able to go after corporations when they do something wrong. And the same questions are arising right now with AI, because it's extremely complex. So if you have, like, say, a car that, you know, makes a bad decision on its own, kills some people, who do you 
who do you hold accountable for that? But then do you hold hold the car accountable? Or the yeah, see, that's the thing. The, the car will make those decisions. The car will ultimately go, I'll kill you to save five other people. And the problem with that is you can't look back and try and blame the company that created the AI. They didn't necessarily tell it to make that decision. Um, you can't even go back and find the individual coder who did it because they might have developed that tool or that line of yeah. code years before it was used in an AI application. So we're not necessarily talking about, um, you know, where we should place the blame or how we should do this. It's more just that, like, we need to start considering these things yeah. because these are going to be very big issues moving forward, and our legal system is not prepared to deal with them. I guess I look at it in that sense, like, what are you, what are you going to sue them for? I mean, what, what kind of... You know, reparations are you going what to are you get gonna, out you're of gonna that? You're going to put them in jail? You yeah. can't, you can't, yeah. yeah. No, exactly. I'm, I'm sorry. This doesn't seem murky to me at all. You hold the corporation or the entity responsible for creating the AI for the problems and issues that come mm. along with it. Because if you're, uh, if you're going to release this thing out into the world and start allowing it to make decisions that you taught it how to make, or at least taught it how to learn how to make all these decisions, you're ultimately responsible for how that technology works, right? And so if you came up with a shoddy AI pro you know, product, then you need to answer for that. If you release it into the world, trust it to make these decisions, and then it goes wrong, that is the, the creator's fault. But is it like suing a parent when your adult child does something stupid in the no, long term? No, I think it's, it's, you're, it's, it's like uh, the corporate personhood. We just mm -hmm. maintain the corporate personhood, and we sh sue the corporation, not necessarily just the CEO, but the corporation in general. You know, um, I mean, these are these are really dicey issues because the autonomous vehicles and and all this other tech coming out there, where the machines are making more and more decisions for us. I think we have to make sure that that stuff is ready to go and field tested to the point where we can reliably predict what it's going to do, and then if it's safe enough, you know, throw it out there. But if but if you allow happen, it to learn on its own, and it's you know, and we get to that level to where it's learning on top of learning on top of learning, then what's going to stop it from making its own decisions that just go completely different from what it was taught? It's like going to school; you learn to do things this way, but then once you're out on your own, it decides to go off on its you know, do something completely different. So is that just the manufacturers have to come up with such a strict like I don't know what it's called like a, a moral code at the base of the the coding of the AI, and then if it if they don't do that, then they should be sued. Well, I think I think like it should potentially. be I think it should be clear how it has been developed and how it's been taught to make these decisions, you know. Yeah. And people basically, you know, I mean, to a certain degree you can opt into certain stuff, but then uh -huh. once you release AI on the AI on the streets and you're out on the streets, just being in the street isn't like accepting the terms and conditions of yeah. that technology. You know, that's that's where it gets really really gray. But um, yeah, I mean, they're going to have to figure out how to protect themselves. I think it's on the corporations to, you know, if they're going to release this in the world and, and it's going to be accepted as a technology that we use, then they better have it on lock. Yeah. The article is so, so good. I yeah, mean, definitely it just, check it out. It's yep. on mm -hmm. DT right now. It's I'm willing to have my mind changed. It's just that I have a pretty strong opinion about that right now, as you can probably tell. <laughs> uh, Keelan in the live chat says, if your AI kills, you should get locked in a room with it for 30 days. That would be the punishment. Well, <laughs> that's, that's a, that's a this, <laughs> I just say this is why we have to suppress the AI now before it gets out of control and make sure that humans are always on top. I'm very pro-human in this situation. Brad Burke uh, here at DT is the opposite. I think he's going to go inside with the robots, so you kind of have to pick your choices, I think. Pick your battles. That's where I'm going with that one. He's going to win. He's, he's, I know he's going to win, yeah. <laughs> Um, but, so there we go. So you can check out that full article at digitaltrends.com. And again, that's something we could probably do an entire show about. But it's, it is fascinating stuff. And Drew, you're right. You have to start thinking about this and where, where it's going to go because it's happening fast, way faster than you think it is. I mean, this is, this is not going to be – this isn't something like 100 years from now. I think we could be really you know, facing these issues within 20 years, like legitimate – AI that's on the same level as us. When's when is it supposed to happen? Uh, uh, so they so they did a survey of like a, all of the biggest Sorry. experts in the AI field, and uh, I think it was somewhere around eighty percent of them said that it was going to happen in the next forty years, and Ugh. even more said it was going to happen in, within the next sixty. So so. This is soon. Very soon. Yeah. Yeah. Although we may not have to worry about it as much. But uh, yeah. Oh, I'll be dead. Yeah. I'll be dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, we well, can read that article at digitaltrends.com. Just a couple of quick things uh, to get to. Um, one, I wanted to bring up about technology that you should not put your uh, faith into because there's sometimes we see some of these videos and we hear about technology just breaking cutting edge stuff. And especially here at Digital Trends, and if you're watching, you're a fan of all of that, I'm sure, of finding out about new things. Sometimes it doesn't always turn out to be as it's promised. And there is one that I was excited about, gosh, last year, I think, is when we learned about this, this um, new Chinese bus that was supposed to revolutionize <laughs> Oh, yeah. Travel. Yeah. Remember? It drives yes. cars and it's stuff. It's the straddling bus. And essentially, it's this bus they would have railing um, a, that sits across, I think, three lanes of traffic or two lanes of traffic. Two, there, yeah. Yeah. two. And it was high enough that a seven foot clearance was underneath it. And this bus would go over traffic. So you could have an actual bus system not slowing cars down. Cars could go under it and keep on going. And it's kind of a genius solution. I think they had up to like 1,400 people could fit in these. In these buses, what? yeah, just ridiculous. Traffic uh, in China is some of the most insane I've ever seen anywhere. Yeah, so this would probably be a huge, yeah. uh, huge benefit. Uh, well, what now? So it's well, they're so they, saying it's a hoax, right? Yep, they released uh, this video. This company got 1.3 billion dollars from individual investors investing in them, and now police in Beijing have detained uh, 30 people associated with it. Apparently, they put out this video where it only goes, I think, it was like a, a couple hundred feet or something like that. But they they have an actual had an actual one working. Now that prototype sits in a rusted out uh, shed somewhere that they've thrown it in, and I guess it just they decided it didn't work, but they have kept the money. Oh. $1.3 billion. <laughs> so 72 investors have filed suit against them. Who knows where the money is now, but it looks like this thing is not happening. I mean, so it's it wasn't so happen. much a hoax as it was a failure. Like, they had, they had a working <laughs> one going. I was like, how did they, you know, rig that whole video and get the whole a thing? A failure or a scam? Could Since they kept I feel like money. this is 55% of all Kickstarter and Indiegogo campaigns <laughs> yeah. just at a <laughs> big, big scale. You know, those yeah. guys yeah. develop prototypes. They have a great idea. They accept a bunch of money. And then where does the money go? It just disappears. And, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, nobody's on the hook and nobody's responding. And, yeah, I mean, imagine if we took all those uh, Indiegogo and Kickstarter campaign you know, runners to task for every time right, they did that. Right, all the money that people have sunk into these. Well, this one, yeah, $1.3 billion, so we're not going to be getting this straddling bus uh, quite uh, quite as soon as we think. So, so there's that. Um, all right, Caleb, I know you wanted to bring up uh, one more thing, and then, Steph, we want to talk about what you're doing next week, too, which is amazing. Uh, but you were going to want to talk about Hulu. Yeah, this Hulu's Hulu, big announcement. you know, earlier at CES, Hulu showed me their new live TV streaming platform, you know, and it felt like they were coming a little late to the party because uh, at that point, Sling TV had been out for a few years. PlayStation View was already out. Uh, DirecTV Now had just come out. So you already had three really solid options for streaming live TV over the internet. You know, ditch your cable or satellite company and go with one of these instead. Mm -hmm. um, but what Hulu showed me was was pretty interesting. They were a little unclear about the different channels that you were able to get. But Hulu is also already cool because, uh, you know, they have a lot of the, the network TV favorites available, usually 24 hours after they've aired on live TV. So there was a little disconnect there. Now they're bridging that gap because they have a live TV service, but it still didn't seem as robust as, say, you know, Sling TV, for example. But recently, uh, they added Showtime, so you could just tack on, um, for a few extra bucks, you could tack on Showtime and get that uh, bundled with your Hulu subscription. And then, uh, I believe it was today, they announced uh, HBO and Cinemax, just in time for Game of Thrones. Yeah! You know, so of course. Move. now it's starting to look more like something that, you know, we should take seriously as an option. Um, because it's definitely super easy to use. I like the interface. Uh, it's more like what you're used to in TV today through a cable or satellite provider, okay. only s sleeker and uh, much more user friendly. It's easy to understand. It's not, you know, the it's so much easier to use, I think, than Sling TV. It's not as comprehensive. You can't get as many channels, but it's a re it's definitely worth taking a look at. If you've been kind of brushing this off, um, or if you're just now starting to think about whether you want to kick your satellite or cable company to the curb, mm -hmm. definitely give a good hard look to what Hulu is offering. And crunch the numbers. You know, Compare it to packages at Sling TV and PlayStation View and see if you're getting what you want. Because you know the, the big promise of streaming TV was... Now I can ditch all those channels I don't want and not pay for them. But, yeah. you know, it's looking a little less like that than we wanted. Hulu's bringing a little bit more of that to the table. So just wanted to throw that out there for anybody who's been thinking about making this move. Check out uh, the new Hulu because it's definitely worth 
considering. You know, if you, if you have a certain number of TV stations that you like and you got to have your HBO, but you don't really need anything else, it's a good one to look at. All right. Yeah, I'll definitely take a look and see see what the pricing is on that. Do we have something going up to, I'm assuming, at digitaltrends.com? Yeah, we've got a story up on, on it right now. You can go check it out, learn about the HBO and Cinemax um, add-ons, how much they cost, and uh, everything else that uh, Hulu's present streaming service offers. Fantastic. All right, well, before we uh, wrap it up today, we need to talk to Stephanie about something she's doing next week that's absolutely horrifying. Uh, <laughs> but you are going to be rappelling down a building here in Portland, Oregon? Yeah, so here's the caveat. So we like to do the Facebook Lives. It's Steph Top 5 whatever, and I come up with the location first and then figure out the Top 5 later because sometimes that's the hardest part. So I've crawled all over a fighter jet. I went live from a sailboat. Next week, next Friday, at this point, 1 p.m. is the time, myself as well as Jake are going to go off the a building in downtown Portland and do a Facebook Live. They Which are going building? to low uh, the one that looks like R2-D2. You know, with a little oh, okay. dome, that yeah, one. I've done okay. it off this building, by the way, which is the second tallest building in downtown Portland, and it was terrifying. <laughs> it was so, so I'm glad. It's so windy, right? Well, Absolutely. and it's, you're way up there. So I'm actually glad, because this other one's about half as tall. It's still going to scare the snot out of Jake. I was like, hey, buddy, are you afraid of heights? <laughs> he goes, no. I go, okay, you will be after this experience. So they're going to lower him down so that he can run the camera, and then I'll just chat with people sort of in real time, and we'll just do a Steph's top five. I, probably something outdoor related, because we're repelling. Do top five screams from Jake, <laughs> 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 I absolutely love that. And it's part of this organization called Over the Edge. They partner with charities here in town. So the charity they're partnering with here is called Girls Inc. And they do a lot of like STEM education for girls, um, a lot of other empowerment stuff. But that's sort of where my dog in the fight is, is I like that they're helping get girls interested in science and technology. And so you basically, cool. if you want to donate money, you donate money, you get to go over the edge. Oh, man. Right? That's how it works. I oh. wonder what this is like for the building occupants. <laughs> well, we did it. We did it here. At there, you're you're working on your database. <laughs> they know. And no, what? they do, the guys. I did it. They off filming the Mission of Big Impossible. Like the they were holding up signs. They were waving. They're you know. I got all these messages when I got down. The people because you got like however many floors. Oh yeah, that's all. That probably takes a long time it too. It took forever. It was like yeah. half an hour. So <laughs> yeah, it's It'll a slow speed. Are you gonna wear your Wonder Woman onesie for that one? Because they'll let me. That's a great idea. Please do. That is a great. I, idea. I need that in my life, Steph. Please right. do it. The Wonder Woman onesie making a reappear. What about if I can get a Spider Man one? Oh, that would be, be good. even That'd better. Be cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. I gotta it's get. Timely. Some, I gotta get shopping. Yeah. All right. Well, take a look. If you see Spider Man or Wonder Woman outside of a building here in downtown Portland, 1 p.m. <laughs> next week Pacific. Why? Well, that's the plan. Live I'll on keep Facebook. You guys posted. All right. So definitely follow that. And thanks uh, everybody for tuning in today too. So we do this show live every Thursday at 2:30 p.m. Pacific time from uh, DT's headquarters here in Portland and broadcasting to all of you. But we also have a podcast. So check out the audio podcast. Go to iTunes or wherever you get yours. Subscribe to it. We've got a bunch different podcasts on there tomorrow at 2 p.m. We'll be live with Between the Streams, our entertainment and movie podcast where we talk about all the things, television and, and everything going on, probably some more about Hulu and, and a lot of stuff going on with the weekend and that. So just stay up to date as usual with everything that Digital Trends is doing. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week with another episode. Word. Sweet.